Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? <coughs> Excuse me. The pollen has been horrible around here. My sinuses are a mess. <clears throat> so, this morning we're going to be reading out of Genesis 39, 12. He left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And a lot of people don't know this story in the Bible. But it's a really uh, famous story. And it's also a great example. The whole verse says that she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. Let's get some context on this. All right, we'll start in verse 7. So Joseph is supposed to be in control of some, some stuff here. And he's been left alone with the master's wife. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. And she said, lie with me. She's like, come on, let's, let's go to the bedroom. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what is with me in this house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. I have to be responsible for all these things. Don't we have a parable? In fact, I think there's a couple of parables in the New Testament from Jesus talking about this very same thing. The master gives the control of his stuff over to someone else, namely those on the earth, to us. Look, my master does not know what is with me in this house, and he, has, he doesn't know what's going on because we're here by ourselves, and that he has, uh, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There was no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? There's parables about this stuff. I'm supposed to be taking care of my master's account, just taking care of his stuff, taking care of what he's committed to me. How can I do something like this? Basically backslide, go into the world, betray his trust. So it was as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. So she was bugging him about this. But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house was inside. She probably sent them all, all away. Then she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. She grabbed his clothes. Come here. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. And so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them saying, see, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. He came into me to lie with me. And I cried out with a loud voice. And it happened when he heard that I looked up my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. So she kept his garment with her until the master came home. Then she spoke to him with words like these, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came in to me to mock me. So it happened as I lifted up my voice and cried out, he left his garment with me and fled outside. So she didn't get what she wanted, but now she's going to try to turn it around and get him in trouble. How many people out there that call themselves Christians are doing the same thing? Not on the part of Joseph, but on the part of the master's wife. Trying to catch people in something so they can accuse them for no reason, because they don't get what they want. <sighs> I've seen it happen since I've been doing this in four and a half plus years. Terrible. But what's the example here? If we've been given something committed to us in trust by the Lord, like the parables say in the New Testament, we should be doing about that business and taking care of that instead of going back to the things of the world and dealing with that stuff. And it's really easy to get caught up, but you got to stay focused. What's the right thing to do? What's the integrity? What does integrity t tell us to do? Stay away from that stuff. So we have a great example here in the Old Testament uh, of him a as a good person, as a, a, a person with integrity, trying to do the right thing and then getting caught up against his will in something he didn't want to get caught up in. And then when he did the right thing concerning it, <coughs> he uh, got in trouble by her because she accused him of something he didn't do. 
I could tell you stories of times I've been blamed for something and I wasn't even in the same, a couple of times I wasn't even in the same state. People are weird. In contending with certain sins, there remains no mode of victory but by flight. The ancient naturalist wrote much of basilisks, this would be serpents, snakes, whose eyes fascinated their victims and rendered them easy victims. So the mere gaze of wickedness puts us in solemn danger. Better for us not to even look at these things, if at all possible. That's hard to do today. You know, advertisers use sex to sell everything. And so they put scantily clad women and men up on billboards trying to sell it. They put it in commercials trying to sell stuff. Trying to play on the lust of the people. They know. That's why they show you food the way they do. Yet when you go get it, it never looks the same. I remember years ago, somebody went to, was it McDonald's, I think? And they said, that's what your menu shows. But look at what you gave me. This is false advertising. And then, of course, the story disappeared because nobody wanted to hear it. It's one of the things I like about Whataburger. You go there and you get a burger, usually on the menu, and what you get looks pretty close. That's a big problem today. Big problem. We're close to the end. This stuff is running rampant. He who would be safe from acts of evil must haste away from occasions of it. If you see temptation, avoid it. A covenant must be made with our eyes not to even look upon the cause of temptation, for such sins only need a spark to begin with, and a blaze follows in an instant. Who would wantonly enter the leper's prison and sleep amid its horrible corruption? He only who desires to be leprous himself would thus court contagion. If the mariner knew how to avoid a storm, he would do anything rather than run the risk of weathering it. Cautious pilots have no desire to try how near the quicksand they can sail, or how often they can touch a rock without springing a leak. Their aim is to keep as nearly as possible in the midst of safe channel. You don't go, you don't sail your boat near the rocks, you stay away from the rocks. Yet I see, I've seen people in my life get as close to the jetties down there on the beach as they could in their boats not realizing the waves are pushing the boat up and down, and then they start banging into the rocks, and then they get stuck. This day I may be exposed to great peril. Let me have the serpent's wisdom to keep out of it and avoid it. The wings of a dove may be of more use to me today than the jaws of a lion. It is true I may be an apparent loser by declining evil company. And this is what people will tell us. You're a loser, you're this, you're that. But I had better leave my cloak than lose my character, my integrity. It is not needful that I should be rich, but it is imperative upon me to be pure. The riches will fail, the purity lasts forever. No ties of friendship, no chains of beauty, no flashings of talent, no shafts of ridicule must turn me from the wise resolve to flee from sin. The world will do everything they can to drag you into their sin with them. They want to be they want to be miserable and they want you to be miserable too. But when you stand your ground away from that stuff, when you don't become a partaker with them, they look down on you. They hate you. They hate you with passion. The devil I am to resist, and he will flee from me. But the lust of the flesh I must flee, for they will surely overcome me. O oh God of holiness, preserve thy Josephs, that Madame Bubble bewitch them not with her vile suggestions. May the horrible trinity of the world, the flesh, the devil, never overcome us. The trinity of the world is, is the trinity is the world, the flesh, and the devil. May they never overcome us. And this is something we fight with every day. Every day. Because this world is designed now to work that way. Satan has orchestrated things in a way that is designed to lead you away. It's designed to lead you into sin. It's designed to get you into some form of carnality and where to avoid those things. And so people have come to me over the years asking me advice about how do I stop doing this? How do I get overcome this? How can I get control over this? The first thing I tell them is take away the temptation. Whatever temptation there is in your life, remove it as far from you as you can. You're not going to get all of it. Trust me. You're not going to win all the battles. Trust me. It, I struggle with them daily. 
I have to remind myself constantly. But the very fact that we're trying, the very fact that we're aware of these things, the very fact that we're guarding our steps and walking where we should, according to the Bible, shows there's something different in us. But we won't, we won't every time be able to pull it off. I mean, in a moment's notice, you can end up with a thought that's impure. It happens to every one of us. And there's not much we can do about it. But the Lord has already taken care of it on the cross. And God, in justifying us, has helped us with that. With those struggles we're going to have in this life. But let me tell you something. If you see that there's something there. <coughs> if you see there's an issue there. And you can do something about it. Do something about it. Don't watch that stuff. Don't listen to that stuff. Don't. You know, be in the same house or building or neighborhood or street as that stuff. Stay away from those things and you won't get pulled into the temptations. It can be hard. It can be terribly hard. And people talk about, you know, I can't stop doing drugs. Well, I mean, the Lord's going to heal your backsliding, but... You got to take the temptation away. I've said this before. I've known people who moved to completely different states to get away from all this stuff. Too much temptation. And so they moved somewhere where nobody knew who they were to take get the temptation out of their life. That's what they had to do. I've heard of people leaving everything, friends, family, everything behind and moving to some place completely opposite of where they were so that they could get away from that stuff, get away from the temptation. And the only way we're going to overcome this stuff is to avoid the triggers. Identify what causes the triggers and get away from it. Look away. Stop up our ears. Because look, as long as we keep engaging in that temptation, it just makes us weaker and weaker and more susceptible. What did Joseph do? Day by day, she kept tempting him. I'm sure she was adjusting her clothes to make her look more attractive. Doing things to try to entice him. Day by day by day. What did he finally do? She finally put her hands on him. He bolted. You know what? I can't be in here. Couldn't get away from it. He removed the temptation by fleeing. Flee with extra flee. Throw your hands up in the air. Run away. Now it may be that people may still look down on you. People may still accuse you. Whatever. You're not in my situation. You don't know what I'm trying to do here. You don't know what's going on. I'm trying to get away from the temptation of doing the things that people are doing so that I don't get caught up in it. It's a sure way to get caught into backsliding. It's a sure way to get back into the world and get back into carnality, back into the flesh. And you don't want to do that. And so we see and identify what these things are and remove as many of them as they can. Now, there's some that you're not going to be able to. There's some stuff you're just not going to be able to avoid because of the life that you live. Go to the Lord in prayer over everything. Take it to him. Take it to the throne. Because he will help you with those things. He will remove those temptations. He will give you strength to endure and overcome. Now, we can't be sinless. A lot of people have this idea in their head that they can't. You can't. You can't be sinless. But this is the whole, the whole point of this is to learn to identify it and avoid it and gain strength, grow, become better. And for the stuff that we do give in and are weak over, the Lord has atoned for. But don't think for one second that it's okay just because he did that. It's not. We have to try. We have to fight. He gave us a way out. Go to prayer. Go to prayer. Fight. Stay away from that stuff. And, and again, it's hard. I know it's hard. Sometimes we just can't. And luckily, we have a Lord that can have compassion on us. That understands. Because he was tempted in every way, just as we are. And had no sin. And so he knows how to get away from that stuff. 
We just got to learn to rely on him and trust in him. Hey, even the apostles, the chosen of the Lord, committed sin and admitted that they committed sin. They struggled. Paul made a great statement, a great speech about this. I know what I should do, but I can't do it. I end up doing what I don't want to do in lieu of doing what I want to do. I make nothing but mistakes. That's why he called himself the chief among sinners. And if we were being honest with ourselves, we would realize that we're no better than anybody else. We just have a Messiah that we believe in that has given us eternal life. It's only because of him that we're different. So since we know all these things, let us make changes. Be a doer of the word. Be Bereans and study. Walk in a way of holiness. You're not going to do it perfectly. But the fact that you're even doing it shows you're different from the rest of the world. And this is something that each one of us personally has to engage in, in our individual lives. Not involving the people in the house, not involving anything else. You have to do this walk individually. Between you and the Lord. And it's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be specific. Because he will work with us at our level and bring us up to his level. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. And to lift you up and to sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you so much for this holy word. And thank you so, so much for these devotions. These devotions have been amazing. Father, we're weak and we're broken and we sin. Yet you are healing us. Every day we are bombarded with everything. Everything in this life just bombards us with temptation. Other people who come from other countries who have suffered physical persecution are brought over here, rescued from their country, and they're like, how do you people live like this? Because you're surrounded by demons and they see our phones and our computers advertising and you're surrounded by demons. It's, it's in every, fab, every bit of the fabric of our society. And so we're constantly barraged with these temptations. And it's hard to get away with, get away from. It's hard to avoid. But Lord, you give us strength to, to avoid these things. You give us strength to overcome these things. And every day we grow more and more able to avoid these things, to make us overcomers, to make us to glorify you. And that even in the midst of all this, we can stand in integrity. We can stand in truth. We can stand and believe and be those people set apart. Those people that are marked out for eternity. Father, make us to come to you when the temptation rises, to reach out to you in prayer, to stop what we're doing and address it, not just ignore it and hope it goes away, but instead actively pursue righteousness, to push away from these things as hard as we can. Sometimes we're weak. Sometimes we just give in. Sometimes we're tired. Sometimes we're wore out. Sometimes we're just overwhelmed completely by the tidal wave of this world. Lord, help us to identify these things, to remember to come to you when we are overwhelmed so that we may, and I very much include myself in this, so that we may overcome again and again, more and more, and grow stronger so that we may stand for you and with you, even while we're living in this world. It's hard to do because everything is designed to take us the other way. But Father, you've given us something the rest of the world doesn't have. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that leads us, guides us, shows us the way and teaches us. May we listen to him more. May we listen to you more. May we listen to your word always. That we may, we may walk in a way that glorifies you. We may be righteous, be holy in our attitude, in our intentions, and for a lesser degree in our actions. That's all for your glory. And it's all according to your will for each one of us. But Father, make us never neglect. Make us to never neglect coming to you with everything, but to learn to trust you, bring it to you, wait on you, and see where everything goes. And in the interim, when we stumble, when we fall, when we make mistakes, I say when because we're going to. 
when we give in to temptation, when we lose the fight, Father, forgive us. Have mercy on us. Restore us. Refresh us. Set us back on our feet so that we can keep going. And motivate us to keep going. And to not be defeated by Satan and his tricks and his devils. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. It is incredible to know that even if we stumble and fall, the Lord is there to pick us up. But why do we just give up and stumble and fall and just wait for him to pick us up? Instead, why don't we get up, look around, I find, look, this is in my way, this, and start moving these things out of our way, that our walk may be straighter and our the path in front of us may be more clear. There's things that we can do. And in the Bible, we're told to do these things. Avoid this, flee this, stay away from this, keep yourselves from this. There's some stuff we have to do. That involves being in the word. That involves learning what to watch for. And if we find anything, remove it from our lives. Even if it's friends, even if it's family, you may have to remove people from your lives that are causing you to sin or tempting you to sin. I can't do this anymore. You're leading me somewhere I don't want to go. I can't go there with you. I've had to tell people in my life that I care about. I, I can't, where you're going, I can't go. I can't walk that path with you. I can't go there with you. The Lord has given me instructions about this and it's not fair for somebody to expect me to follow them in a place where they know that even they shouldn't be going. So if you're struggling with stuff, and we all are, take it to the Lord, ask him what to do, and then wait on him. And if you identify something in your life that is a, a, a trigger or a stressor or a temptation, remove it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it with the counsel of the Lord. And watch how things change. It'll be amazing. I guarantee it. Because it has been for me. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.